Hi, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to be reviewing Pitch Dark by Paul Doiran, and thank you to NetGalley for providing an EA or C of this in exchange for an honest review. I know I gotta do something about this lighting. Um, I just, I, I don't know what to do, because there's no, there's no light above me, <laughs> so I need my lamp. Um, it, I mean, it is sunny outside today, but um, I usually need my lamp. Um, so this book follows Warden Mike Bowditch, and it starts with him at home with his wife, and he she has just told him that um, she might be pregnant. She's a little late. She's not really sure. She doesn't think she is, but she might be. Um, they're having this conversation when he gets a call from another warden saying that, hey, there's this guy who came by. He rented an ATV. It's pouring. He shouldn't have taken it out, really, because of the weather. Now he's been gone. Should we, should we file a missing persons? And he's like, Oh, why did you let him take it out in the first place? And um, the guy goes on to say that the guy is looking, the guy who rented the ATV is looking for a man living in the woods with his daughter. And Mike knows that this is his wife's friend, Josie's cabin builder, who she is very, um, she's very obsessive about keeping him secret and, and mysterious. Um, she says that he doesn't like to have his name put out there. He doesn't like pictures taken of what he's building. Um, he, he doesn't want anything put out there on the internet. Um, so he's like, okay, well, let me, let me go over there. You know, we'll, we'll check this out. So he goes, they check out where the guy was staying in his, in his, in the cabin, um, and find that not only is he armed, but he's taken a lot of, uh, ammo with him too. So he contacts Josie and, and explain the situation. She kind of brushes it off, but he says he'd like to go up there and check it out anyway. And so Mike and his father-in-law head out. And I want to just say that um, throughout the whole book, Mike is talking about how much he loves his father-in-law, how great his father-in-law is, how great their relationship is, how close they are, how many things he's learned from him, how he respects him, um, how he respects his advice. You get the picture. So they go out and they meet Josie and they kind of explain the situation and Josie takes them in her helicopter out to where this man, Mark Redman, is building a cabin for her and he has his daughter Katie with him. When they get there, it's just Katie. And this whole time, Mike is talking about how bad of a father Mark Redmond is, even though he's never met him. But he obviously is a bad father because he's got his daughter out in the main Northwoods. Um, she's on a construction site. Um, he, she, he had them out there, had her out there during the winter, yada, yada, yada. The, if, keep in mind, Mike doesn't have any children of his own. He's just being a holier than thou asshole at this point. So when they get out there and they meet Katie, um, he notices that Katie is missing some teeth and this further cements his, like this, this confirms his theory that Mark Redman is a terrible father because why wouldn't he take this girl to the dentist if she fell and lost some teeth? So when Redmond arrives back at the construction scene where they're building the cabin, um, he, he takes them inside. He tells Katie to make them some coffee, um, the dark roast that they've been saving. And Katie, um, gives them their coffee. They're talking. Um, Mike is explaining his concerns about this mysterious man that is looking for Mark and his daughter. And Mark kind of laughs. Um, and he said, well, you know, you said you're from Alaska. Mike, Mike tells Mark, you said you're from Alaska. This guy's from Iowa. Why would he be looking for you? He's like, well, probably because after my wife died, her really, really rich family has been looking for me to take away my daughter, even though I have custody of her. And he gives them the story. But as he's telling them the story, uh, Mike notices that Josie and, and his father-in-law are starting to yawn. And Mike himself is starting to feel a little tired, but he keeps interrogating Mark. And then eventually they all pass out. Mike comes to first and they're all tied to trees. And Mark kind of um, goes over like why he's doing this. He's like, I don't want to do this, but you know, I don't want you to, I don't want you taking away my daughter. Like he, he explains the whole thing all over again. And Mike asks him what he used to drug them. He goes, well, GB, GBH or GHB, I don't know what he said. Basically, he basically reviewed them. And Mike tells him, you know, hey, Josie's an older person. My father-in-law's an older person. You don't know how they're going to react to this. And Mark is like, no, they'll be fine. And him and his daughter take off. And so Mike is trying to wake up his father-in-law and Josie. 
And of course, um, because Mike is a know-it-all in all aspects of everything, he foresaw this happening. Josie starts convulsing and then she starts throwing up and then she dies. And when his father-in-law comes to, um, he is able to get out of his, out of his, uh, out of his binding. And then he releases Mike and his father-in-law, Charlie tells Mike, because Mike is going to go after Mark and his daughter. He tells Mike, don't underestimate Mark. This guy is clearly more skilled in knowing the woods and, and things than, than you are. And Mike is hurt and he's pouty and he goes after Mark. And so begins this whole trek um, from where they are towards Canada as Mike is trying to track down Mark and his daughter. Um, and as he's going, he um, he's thinking back to what his father-in-law told him about being careful. And he cusses him out in his head, despite loving and respecting and being close to this man. He basically, in his mind, calls him a fucking fool and keeps on going. Which is one of the, one of my issues with the main character. I had so many issues with the main character. I did enjoy the trek through the Maine woods because I spent the first half of my childhood in Maine, running through those woods, not the North Woods. We lived near um, Farmington uh, in a small town, but I did. I, I wandered the woods when there wasn't snow on the ground. I was out in the summers from sun up to sundown. Um, there were creeks that ran through our land. Um, I. I loved it, you know, and so this was, this was like a trip down memory lane in a sense, with the exception of the story and the writing and the characters. Um, I'm trying not to be too negative about this book. I really am. Um, the, the writing wasn't necessarily bad near the end. I noticed that the sentences were short. Like he did this, he said this, he saw this, 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 it was, it was just short, but it wasn't something, like I said, it wasn't something I noticed until the end. So it didn't make for a bad read. What made for a bad read was the main character. And I didn't realize when I got this or when I requested this, that this was book 14 in series. <laughs> it, it, it worked as a standalone. I didn't feel like I needed to have read the first 13 books to really understand the story. Um, but I will tell you that I am not going to go back and read the first 13 books. Um, the main character was extremely annoying. Um, but I did enjoy it. Um, I did roll my eyes a lot with Mike. I, I really, really did. And there was, there was things that seemed implausible, perhaps not impossible, but definitely impossible and very illogical, um, that happened in this book. Um, and, and in the end, I, I, like, I felt like he did a 180. Like you think something's happening about three quarters or more through the book and then it ends up being something else and then you're like well, what um but I did finish it I mean it was an engaging read I, it wasn't like I I it wasn't like I hated to pick it up to read it but it was just it was disappointing in, in minor ways but it was also intriguing in some ways and it was beautiful in other ways mm. so Am I going to read any of the other books in the series now? Would I read Paul Doyeran again? Maybe, if he wrote a, a book not in the series, but this looks to be um, his life's work at this point. It seems that all of the things that he's written thus far have been for this series of Mike Bowditch, so I won't be, I won't be picking up any of those books. But you might like it. Um, I, I recommend going and checking out, um, at least reading what his books are about. Um, like I said, the, the, the woods aspect, the nature aspect of it was, was really, was really intriguing. It was, it was beautiful. So, but thank you so much for watching and like and subscribe below.